costume we call it wilding and other people also remove the re mm -hmm. because it, it makes always a preference to something that has existed yeah, before yeah. but rather to focus and point directly towards those uh, yeah. processes very the the, the the powerful processes that they are always existent and that we can just embrace and right. promote so in this interview with Mikhail Thiel the founder of Apis Arborea uh, a nonprofit dedicated to uh, wilding bees a very novel concept not happening in very many places around the world um, we think so much about what we can get from the bees not so much how the bees can thrive on their own you know most of the conversations that you hear about the collapse of the bees it's um, all about how we've created this bastardized system of uh, using bees to pollinate our giant unnatural monoculture farms um, so Mikael's on the totally opposite end of that of like how do we put bees back into nature or how do we put them into nature um, even though they're not a native species here so um, I think you'll find it very interesting and learn a lot about how the principles of wilding versus um, rewilding um, versus you know conventional bees and native bees not a super long uh, interview um, but I really got a lot of value out of it. Please let me know in the comments below if you'd like me to do a follow-up with Mikael. And uh, without further ado, my interview uh, about the bees in the wild. So Apis Arborea is a nonprofit organization that uh, takes honeybees as a species outside of beekeeping mm -hmm. and works with research, education, and restoration programming mm -hmm. to uh, protect the species mm. in the wild. Mm -hmm. Because what's happening is that the uh, the annual mortality rate mm -hmm. of honeybees of managed honeybees in in apiaries is almost 70 percent in the u.s and canada and compare that with an meaning that 70 percent die yes right every year 70 percent of all honeybees of managed honeybees are dead uh, with an increasing tendency mm -hmm. and compare that with honeybees living in the wild, unmanaged, honeybees that are protected from any kind of beekeeping activities, and they have an average lifespan of over six years. So that's why we, the, the, the Latin for honeybees is Apis mellifera, that's the melly in there, the commodity, the honey. We changed the name and call our organization Apis arborea. We define it now through habitat because honeybees have lived for 120 million years uh, in cavities, in tree cavities mostly. Uh, and that's what we are doing. We are, prom we are kind of re reintegrating ethics and use biomimicry to protect this species from extinction. Yeah. I'll just ask you a question, okay? Sure. Um, so, what are some if I can of the, answer it. so what are some of the specific uh, programs that you guys are working on? Like, what are you doing here with with Gurgich? Are you are you guys working with them or? We are. Yeah, we just started working with Gurgich this spring, literally two months ago. Uh -huh. And um, the overarching approach is that we learn from healthy uh, e honeybee ecosystems in the wild identify certain kind of princi successful principles and then see how can we integrate them in cultivated landscapes, for example, like Regridge. Right. And so we started our collaboration here with uh, uh, watershed assessments. So we walked around to see how does this all look like, what's happening, what's, you know, what's the tree cover, what's, what is all in this ecosystem. And then um, we, they actually, they uh, sourced those uh, tree nests, that's how we call them. Uh, they're biomimicking natural honeybee nests and trees. So they source them from us and they're setting them up now all over their vineyards. And the idea is here to empower watersheds. Can you still hear me? Yeah, go ahead, to empower watersheds. So now the idea is we want to empower watersheds uh, by not um, uh, importing any species but rather support that what's here mm -hmm. so the idea is we want to embrace and support 
unmanaged honeybees that live in this watershed mm. and give them nesting habitat right. so that and provide them with all the conditions needed for them to rebalance <laughs> to increase their health to the state where we can where we find wild unmanaged honeybees in in the wilderness in those i imagine those wild honeybees although that's not the purpose I, I, if, I, if I understand you correctly, they'll be then providing ecosystem services to all Correct. the vineyards and the farmers in the area. Correct. Yeah, yeah. That's what it is. So it's kind of like the principle of letting nature, well, letting nature thrive on its own and then all yes. those ancillary benefits we receive by creating conditions where nature can thrive. Exactly. That's yeah. exactly how it works. And um, there's a you can call this also, you know, um, natural selection to embrace and empower natural selection. Um, what we are using kind of a, a more contemporary. Um, uh, um, I can't they're help definitely, but no, I, I love chickens too. <laughs> it's like I adore them, really. I Here, miss, let's, let's just take a side. Yeah, note I, yeah, and, I miss we'll, the chickens in my own we'll, garden. I, we don't have them anymore. Enjoy the passing chickens. <laughs> <laughs> picked up in my eyes seeing the chickens hard to so, pass up a, a good photo shot like that yes <laughs> and they're very photogenic yes they are um, but what I was trying to say is so uh, this to embrace and empower natural selection mm -hmm. and uh, we are kind of adopting kind of a no, more contemporary uh, uh, notion of that which is called wilding mm -hmm. and wilding describes self-willed ecological processes right like you're not trying to impose the 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 state in which pre from like 1500 non-invasive the ideal but just actually yes. taking what's actually going on in the ecosystem and then enhancing that correct exactly cool and to do it in a very broad way so that mm -hmm. you know natural selection is mainly a reference to genetics mm -hmm. right where wilding principles take in account way a much broader field mm -hmm. for example it's described as self-willed that um, that suggests that there is agency and sentience in landscapes right because landscapes are constituted by innumerable species and uh, in, the, in the olden days, it was all perceived and understood within the framework of mechanics. Uh -huh. But that is not true anymore. You know, even conventional science is not looking at agency of plants and preferences and feelings of. Right. So uh, to take all, to make it whole, to make this approach whole and empower, that's basically it, to empower landscapes. Um, and to embrace that that innate wisdom uh, to know how what the pathways towards healings are nice. is there uh, any sort of codified ideas around wilding these days or is it sort of a relatively new concept that is just being invented as we speak <laughs> <laughs> um, that's a beautiful question I think it depends on where you are. Mm -hmm. Europe is probably a little bit ahead of the states. Right. And there are a lot of, they call it rewilding programs uh -huh. yeah. that are even uh, uh, sponsored and promoted on um, government levels, uh -huh. for example, in England, right. also in Holland and Germany. Right. Here, it's, it's, the terminology is not all the way known yet. Yeah. And we, as Apis Arborea, uh, changed the ling the linguistics a little bit and we call it wilding and other people also remove the re mm -hmm. because it, ha it makes always a preference to something that has existed yeah, before yeah. but rather to focus and point directly towards those uh, yeah. processes very the, 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 the powerful processes that they are always existent and that we can just embrace and right. promote yeah. that's great I love that I, I have a bit of a challenge with the regenerative organic part because yeah. re sort of points back to a, a past point as well. Yeah. And I, I made peace with it personally by yeah. there is some regenerative that is really necessary that we regenerate 
the wild ecosystem relationships. Yeah. Uh, but it, it's kind of a misnomer because we are generating something entirely new. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we can't go back to what was before. <laughs> so I'm, I'm right there with you. That's, yeah. that's that's what we're doing. And that's you know, great. it is it is there's, there are a lot of things are shifting. Um, conservation here in the States has been and still is being governed by a dichotomy mm -hmm. of bad or good, yeah. native versus invasive. It's yeah, right. a very strong narrative and I think um, there are new voices coming mm -hmm. and suggesting that this is uh, too narrow of a focus and yes. we have to actually broaden this yes. up. And, and I'm mentioning it because you mentioned yeah. this the this assumption of, of a certain kind of um, ecosystem status that right. once upon had existed right. and now is referenced to yeah. when in fact it is That's kind of almost pointless at a time of climate emergency when uh, burning carbon is changing the nitrate levels of all global soils interesting and we and or climate induced migration yeah. of all species yeah so we have there is a motion underway that we have to you know accompany we have to ride yeah we can have to ride it yeah uh, and it, it makes and even it if misses the point of grabbing an artificial time capsule yeah. and right yeah. yeah really good and it, it makes me think about also even if we didn't have this crisis of our, our total climate destabilization yeah. uh, and radical transformation, we still couldn't go back to anything that was before because nature is a constant evolutionary state. You know, yeah. All we can do is try to ride it and work with it and be a benef beneficial force alongside of it. Yeah. Yeah, very true. Yeah. Yeah, so just to sum this up, so we as, at Apis Arborea, we consider Apis mellifera the honeybee mm -hmm. as a novel wildlife of the Americas. Oh, nice. Uh, and that is, I would say, the core focus of what Avis Arborea is doing. And from there, then we, we are developing innovative programs to link and uh, to enhance beekeeping, conservation and all kinds of things. Nice. Well, thank you so much for you, explaining all that to <laughs> us. And um, uh, do you want to give the viewers uh, a way to contact you? Sure, yeah. The best way to, uh, to contact us is through our website, mm -hmm. apisarborea.org. That's A P I S A R B O R E A.org. Okay, great. Thanks. Thank you, thank you Mike.